Hello and welcome back to Ionic Apps for WooCommerce. So far we have looked on a number of Ionic components and all those components that we have seen so far are the CSS components which means that they were completely built using just HTML and CSS. Now we are going to take a step further and from this video onwards we will have a look at some of the JavaScript components that Ionic offers. But before that we need to get familiar with the Ionic structure. So you know that we have this index.html file and this is the file that we have been working for now. And we also have this JS folder right here. And inside this JS folder I have an app.js file. If you open this file you'll see that there is a small fragment of code already inside of this file. So what does this code actually do? Let's have a look at the first line of code. At line number 6, we have the code that says angular.module starter and then within square brackets we have passed in ionic. Well, this actually creates a new angular module with the name starter and ionic is a dependency which means that we are creating a new angular application and this angular application called starter depends on another angular application called ionic. That's right, whenever we create an Ionic application, we have to make use of AngularJS to make it work. All the logic that we want to implement in Ionic applications is implemented with the help of Angular code. Let's leave this dot run method for now. We will have a look at what this does in the later lecture. But for now, let's go back to our index.html file and on the body tag, I have an attribute called ngapp and it has a value called starter. Now this starter is the same value that our app.js file has as the name of the module. Whatever will be the name of the module, the same will be reflected here in the ngapp directive. This way our index.html file will be bound to the module that we have written in our app.js file. Let's make this work. So what I'm going to do I'll just remove all this code. So I'll just remove this form tag from here that we created in the last video. And I have removed that. And right here, I just want to display a message. But before that, we have to create a controller. A controller is a link between our view, which is our HTML file, and the data that is stored somewhere. Now the data may be stored somewhere on a remote database or inside our app.js file itself but we need a controller to make these things work together. So let's create a controller first and in order to create a controller you have to use the directive ngcontroller and then give this controller a name. So let's just call this main controller. The naming convention is that you type in the name and then the letters ctrl both in camel case. So this reflects that this is a controller now all I need to do is create this controller in my app.js file and then this ion paint tag can be controlled from within that main controller that we'll write in our app.js file. Remember that since we have defined ngcontroller on our ion paint tag, all the content inside ion paint and only the content inside ion paint is accessible and manipulatable via our controller. Anything outside of that controller is beyond the scope of the controller. So let's go to our app.js file and create the controller. And in order to create the controller, you have to use the dot controller method. And it is a function which takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the controller. And second parameter is a function which is the controller itself. So whatever we'll type inside this controller, will be executed whenever our index.html file is loaded or whenever our ion pane is loaded. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to display a message in my index.html file. If you want to pass on some information from our controller to our HTML file or to our view, then we have to use a service which is called scope. So we can use scope and we can type in anything here. Let's just type in message and let's say hello world. What this does, this creates a variable called message which we can access in our index.html file. 
and we use the scope service that angular provides and the main function of scope service is that it allows us to access methods and properties that we create in our controller in our view and since we want to use this service in our controller we have to inject it as a dependency and to inject it we have to pass this as a parameter in our controller function so this is it this is all we have to do for now and now we can go back to our index.html file then I'll have to type in message but make sure that you surround message with a pair of curly braces this makes sure that it is understood by angular otherwise message would be just interpreted as another HTML text so let's save it now you can see that the hello world message is displayed in my ion content okay we can use HTML tags with it it just works perfect and now the message will be displayed as h1 heading okay so the scope service allows us to pass information from our model which is hello world right now to our view which is index.html right now we also have a number of other services that we will learn and use throughout the course but for now scope is the one that we want to start with let's create an array and display that array in our view okay so I'll just create a new array called users you can name it whatever you want and this will be a JSON array and each of the JSON object will have a name and I'll type in a few names here okay so I have created an array with four objects and each of the object is a JSON object which just contains a name key with the value of different names okay so we have the name and we have the value of the name and this happens for each of the four objects we can have as many objects as we want now since we have created this users array on our scope we can use this users array in our view in our index.html file so let's see how to do that first let's just try to type in users like this and see what happens see you get to see all the data that we have created in our app.js file but this is not how we want it in a real world application we just want to display the values which are the names in this case for this purpose we have an ng repeat directive that angular has built into it and it helps a lot when you have arrays to handle okay so how do we use ng repeat let me just show you so we will just create a list okay so this is just an unordered list and we will have list items inside this unordered list now I just want to display a list item for each of the names so I will use an ng repeat directive on our li tag and our ng repeat directive will have a value now if you come from a C sharp background you might be familiar with the for each loop what for each loop does it creates a temporary instance of one of the indexes of the array so the name of our array is users and I just want to take one at a time okay I can use user which is a temporary instance of one of the users this allows us to use the user object inside the li tag so now I can just type in user here and the user object will be accessible inside the li tag okay since we have four users for each iteration of ng repeat we will have a different user let's see how it works out okay so now you can see that I have a list and each item is displayed in a new line but still we get to see the name key which we do not want so let's just type in dot name here this way we will just have the name of the user object and now you can see that I only get to see the names so this is pretty cool right I can also create more properties let's just type in city and now I'll go back to my index.html file and I'll put a dash and now I can also display the city along with the name all I have to do is use user.city within double curly braces and that's it now I get to see the city of each of the users along with their name we will be creating a lot of controllers throughout the course 
and this was our first controller and ng repeat has a number of other options as well that we'll see later in the course